Okay, you guys, good morning. Um, I have a very serious message for you this morning, and uh, Holy Spirit's not playing games out here, and I'm sorry that these demons do not understand this. Um, one of these abusive pastors that have been abusing me from the beginning, extremely covertly, none of you would ever believe how abusive this person is, um, put out a video last night talking about I will get it in one second and I will put this in the description so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about talking about um, cult like tactics in the church um, and I'm, I'm going to explain exactly why he did what he did here it is your church, is your church actually a cult? Cult practices exposed. So um, this is, is uh, appearing to be uh, a helpful video for you, but it's what he says inside the video when he first starts the video that gives him away. And this is what you all really have to begin to understand and identify as I said, people who are, are genuinely following Christ cannot abuse other people. Just cannot. Cannot. So um, this, this no doubt, and this is what I was shown, it came out because yesterday I said people believe that Christians cannot be demonized. The reason for that is because the majority of Christians are not really saved. So what he says in his video is, um, people of the world, so he's accusing me of being of the world. This sleeper from hell is accusing me of being of the world. People of the world who uh, talk down about the church, the church is the bride of Christ. So let's look at the church um, with some grace. Let's Let's see. Now he is going to give you the Christian way to look at this. Meanwhile, the words that just came out of his mouth was exactly covert narcissistic abuse. So I want you to see the deception here. I want you to see the deception of what's happening here. Let me tell you something. Through all of this stuff that's happening to me, I have forgiven every last one of these pastors, but... I told you, I do exactly what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. I do exactly what the Holy Spirit says. And this, this topic is so important because so many people's lives are at stake here. Their, their lives now, their spiritual life and their eternal life are at stake here. And Holy Spirit is not playing. He's not playing. And, and these fakes out here are going to be exposed. They're going to be exposed. So, and also what, what this guy says is, uh, the, the church is the bride of Christ and should be uh, respected or whatever he says, I'm paraphrasing. Um, not like these uh, so-called YouTube apostles. Okay? Not like these YouTube apostles. So, Here's what I'm going to tell you guys. We're going to go through this meticulously. I'm going to give you, as I always do, right from the scripture, what it says. As you all know, we are in the end times. Um, what, what is happening here? God will use... I'm going to read the scripture to, to help you fully understand what I'm saying. God will use the, the people that you would least expect to do his work. So uh, this one with the massive ego and the pride who is out here screaming from the rooftops that has his ego and pride just dripping off him like venom of a cobra. Actually, it's a Leviathan. Um, 
out here screaming from the rooftops and disagreeing with everyone because he is a self-proclaimed expert in the Holy Spirit and he knows better than everybody else out here. He is so anointed. He knows better than everybody else out here. Especially us YouTube apostles. He absolutely knows so much more than we do. You see, it's the ones who scream the loudest and the ones who scream the longest are the ones who are the most asleep and the most ignorant. And especially if they're a prosperity preacher who has learned from an early age how to con people out of their money. Yeah, they will scream the loudest because they want you to hear them above everybody else so that you will send them your money. Okay? That's what they're doing. So, um, this massive ego that this person has who claims that he can never be demonized because he is a Christian is in fact fully demonized with the spirit of Leviathan. And he is in so much of a sleep that he can't see it because he doesn't believe it can happen to him, which left the door wide open for Leviathan, for Leviathan to move right in. So, um, all I can say to this sleeper snake man is that, honey, you have no power here. The Holy Spirit really does live here. I will pray for your deliverance. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So now let's read the first scripture, shall we? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 25 to 28. Now listen very carefully here. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than any human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. And do you understand why that is? Are you seeing the uh, comparison here? The weak and the strong, the, uh, the, the wise and the ignorant, uh, the foolish and the wise. Um, the people who believe that they're wise. And let me tell you something. Nisargadatta always says, Knowledge is for the ignorant. So, so this Leviathan snake man out here who, who wants to uh, put me down and call me a YouTube apostle, um, he believes that he is uh, so much wiser than everybody else out here, which is why his venom just drips off of him. Okay? Um, no, people who believe that they're wise, you see, uh, as I was saying, Ig um, knowledge is for the ignorant and who are the ignorant they're not people who are stupid they're people who are still asleep so if you consider yourself wise by the world standards you're ignorant and this is why it says for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is is stronger than human strength and this is the reason why if you consider yourself wise by the world standards you know absolutely nothing if you consider yourself strong by human standards you're a weakling because you're blind 
You're blind. This is what this is saying. You see, when you understand that God, the Holy Spirit, resides in all of us, we all have the ability to fully peel away this personhood and fully live in the existential reality. This phrase is not only referring to God, the God of all creation, but the Holy Spirit that resides in every single one of us. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives us our our existential reality, our existential truths. We no longer have to seek truth. As you've seen over and over again, everything I say is in the Bible. Am, am I just so brilliant and wise? Nope, it's because the Holy Spirit feeds me what I need to know. This is what happens. The Holy Spirit feeds me what I need to know. I would never take credit for this. I would never take credit for this. So, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. So, this Leviathan snake man thinks he is smarter than everybody. Even all of the demon slayers out here who are saying that Christians can, in fact, be demonized. This Leviathan snake man out here went against all of them. Because he knew better than everybody else. Especially these YouTube apostles. Okay. But what he attempted to do last night was to uh, put me down, number one, which is neither here nor there because, as I said, you must value a person's opinion for what they say to bother you. So I don't value his opinion. He's a joke as far as I'm concerned. Um, I pray that he wakes up very soon. I pray first that he gets deliverance from his Leviathan spirit. Uh, because that will keep him in the sleep. And as you've heard me say over and over again, these prosperity preachers believe that it's God blessing them, that they got all this money and their ministry is growing. Nope, it's the God of the earth. That's who they're worshiping. It's the God of the earth. Okay? The God of all creation is telling you that you cannot worship two masters. You cannot worship him and money. You cannot be of the world and of him. You cannot. And he's told us that over and over again. So these prosperity preachers are worshiping the God of the earth. Okay? So now, um, so he attempted to say that I was disrespecting the bride of Christ, which is his church. Uh, when in fact, no, I was not. You must understand that everything I say out here is guided by the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm not prideful enough to ever believe that that I could ever have a message every single day that, that I concocted on my own that actually matters in the lives of people. No, that's not me. That's the Leviathan man over there, but no, it's not me. So what I said was, most Christians are not saved. And what I was able to see from the very beginning was that the majority of the Christian faith is still in the sleep. They're still of the world. And this is, in fact, the truth. And I'm getting ready to read it to you biblically. If you just say a sinner's prayer... And you're, you're being moved by the Spirit in the moment while you're at a service of some sort where you've got many people around you. As I said, we're spirit beings in a human form, but everything around us, the whole universe is created of energy and vibration, light and sound. Okay? This is what is created. What and when, when vibration and energy move, matter is formed, okay? Uh, this is what the whole universe has been created of. So when we are standing in a church setting and people are singing and worshiping God in mass numbers, even 50, 100 people, that's a mass number when you talk about being by yourself. The Bible says, if two or more are in my name, I am in your presence. When you feel the presence of God upon you, there's nothing like it. So you may be drawn emotionally at that moment to say the sinner's prayer and say that, that you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. 
and you may sincerely mean it. Or you may be going through a very difficult time in your life and, and you're, you're reaching for God. But what winds up happening, if you're only looking for a quick fix to your problem, if you're only um, in a process of healing from grief or loss or something like that, this is not a sincere from your heart request to have Jesus be your Lord and Savior because what happens, it has happened to me too. So I speak from experience. I am not out here putting other Christians down. I am speaking from experience, which is why the Holy Spirit is allowing me to speak on this. Okay? So what happens? Sincerely, we ask Jesus into our life. And then what happens? After Jesus helps us, heals us, we start feeling better. Well, what happens? We go right back to our old life. We don't read the Bible. We don't go to church. We don't associate with other Christians. We're out fornicating, smoking cigarettes, uh, going to the bars on the weekend, um, cursing like a truck driver. Some of us are out doing drugs. Um, this is why it's a repetitive cycle. We're literally trying to change our lives because our spirit man knows what we want and our spirit man is always being led back to the Father. It's always being led back to the Father. But we have this soul aspect in us that these demons are running. We are constantly in a battle between the light and the darkness. We are in a constant battle. Until we are fully delivered, we are fully free. We are in this constant battle. For any Leviathan snake man out here to say that a Christian cannot be demonized, the only answer for that is because he does not know the truth. The fact is, he is demonized. And his eyes have scales on him. He can't see the truth. And so he will covertly abuse people who speak the truth. Which will absolutely give him away. He is not coming from the light. And Leviathan is getting a little irritated by this light shining on him. Guess what, Leviathan? You have no power here. Holy Spirit is here. See that light? Holy Spirit is here. So, let's take a look. What does the Bible say about the church in the end times? And you all know we are in the end times. So what does the Bible say about the church? Now you're going to see that this YouTube apostle was not disrespecting the bride of Christ. This YouTube apostle was sounding the warning alarm as told to me and shown to me through the Holy Spirit. I was sounding the alarm to the church. I was sounding the alarm to Christians. So now here we go, and I, I hope and pray that you all will pay very close attention here. Bible verses about church in the end times. Revelations chapter 2, 1 to 11. This is Jesus himself writing a letter to the churches. And let's hear what he says. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not. You have found them liars, and you have, you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my namesake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you. Now, he is talking to Christians. He is talking to the church. He's not talking to unbelievers. He's talking to believers. Okay? Nevertheless, I have this against you. That you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen repent and do the first works what is the first works where have they fallen remember you have left your first love what was that 
Well, when we are first saved, our first love is always Jesus. We come from a place of love. We come from the heart. So where have they fallen? Their hearts have hardened from all of the, uh, the insolent uh, Leviathan spirits out here. Their hearts have hardened. So what Jesus is saying is repent. Go back to that place of love. This is his commandment to us, you guys. It is very simple. Go back to that place of love. It's what he's commanding. Believers. Believers. Repent and do the first works. Or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place. Unless you repent. But this you have. That you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Which I also hate. Uh, there is uh, an emotion. A negative emotion by Jesus. He hates. He hates evil. We are commanded to hate evil. It is a righteous negative emotion. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life. Which is in the midst of of the paradise of God and to the angel of the church of Smyrna write these things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life I know your works tribulation and poverty but you are rich and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not but are a synagogue of Satan hear me they are a synagogue of Satan these are these prosperity preachers. They are of the world. They are idolaters and their God is money. And they believe that they are the ones who are godlike. They know it all. And they look down on everybody else. They are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Revelation 3, 10 to 22. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot, having one foot in the world and one foot following God, the lukewarm Christians, which are the majority of Christians on this planet. Majority of Christians on this planet. They are still out living their sinful lives, yet saying that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. Listen to what he says. These things says the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, I have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me 
gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see as many as I love I rebuke and chasten therefore be zealous and repent behold I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens a door I will come into him and dine with him and he with me to him who overcomes I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne he who has an ear let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches now if that doesn't tell you everything that I have been saying out here I don't know what does this is the letter from Jesus to the churches to lukewarm Christians to prosperity preachers who claim to be rich and don't need anything else they are wretched in Jesus's eyes they are wretched because they are worshiping mammon their God is money this is what I've been saying out here and I have been so brutally attacked which is what I expect Satan does not like the light at all at all Revelation 1 1 the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John Revelation 1 10 to 11 I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last and what you see write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia to Ephesus to Smyrna to Pergamos to Thyatira to Sardis to Philadelphia and to Laodicea Revelation 3 5 to 8 he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments and I will not blot out his name from the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels he who has an ear let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia right these things says he who is holy he who is true he who has the key of David who opens he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens I know your works see I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have a little you have a little strength have kept my word and have not denied my name Matthew 24 12 to 13 and because lawlessness will abound the love of many will grow cold but he who endures to the end shall be saved Matthew 25 2 to 13 now five of them were wise and five were foolish those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps but while the bridegroom was delayed they all slumbered and slept and at midnight a cry was heard behold the bridegroom is coming go out to meet him then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said to the wise give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out but the wise answered saying no lest there should not be enough for us and you but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut afterward the other virgins came along saying Lord Lord open to us but he answered and said assuredly I say to you I do not know you watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming and this is exactly what I said yesterday that no one knows when when uh, Jesus will come back no one knows when we are going to leave the forum uh, the next minute is not promised to us why are Christians wasting so much time 
Why are Christians wasting so much time? Why isn't the church doing its job? The church meaning the pastors. Why aren't they doing their job to shep shepherd the flock properly? Properly. So let's really get a look at what's, what, what, this, what this verse is saying here. The virgins, there were ten virgins waiting for the bridegroom. The bridegroom, of course, is Jesus. The virgins signify the church. The church is the bride of Christ. Five had oil in their lamps. And extra, extra oil to bring in case they ran out. Because they did not know when the bridegroom was coming. So they had extra oil to put in their lamps. What, in fact, does the oil signify? Is the oil money? Well, we know Jesus told us that you cannot worship money and worship him at the same time. It will not ever work. So what does the oil signify? The oil signifies the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Have you transcended the world? Have you transcended the world? You hear many of these preachers say, um, I, I especially hear Apostle Pagani say this. Let's give credit where credit is due. I especially hear Apostle Pagani say this. Get fresh oil. Get fresh oil. Get refilled with the Holy Spirit. This is what the, the verse is talking about. So there were five Christians who had the Holy Spirit, revered the Holy Spirit, and made sure they kept steady in the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit's light would never go down in them. They, they stayed constantly, constantly repenting of their sins and staying away from the world. The other five would, would be considered uh, the people I described who, who say that Jesus is their Lord and Savior, but continue living their sinful life. So what happens? They ran out of oil. Their light dimmed. And what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say? Afterward, the other virgins came along. After they went to go buy some more oil, the, vir the other virgins came along saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. I don't know how often we can hear these words. These words are listed throughout the Bible. That if you are of the world, if you are a mammon worshiper, if you are an idolater, meaning you, you idolize yourself, you idolize money, you idolize anything other than the Lord. You idolize name and fame, you idolize your title, you idolize anything other than the Lord. He will tell you, that he does not know you. Now, one thing, one thing that I want to say about this video you're about to see from this Leviathan snake man is that he says that um, those people out in the world are saying that uh, you shouldn't go to the movies with your wife. You shouldn't you shouldn't go to your child's activities. Nobody is saying that. Um, but, I, but I have told you very carefully, there are 10 ways actually that demons can enter, can enter the form. So there's two, four, six, no, two, four, six, seven, vagina or penis, so that's sex, fornication, so that's eight, nine, that's eight, depending on your sex, that's eight. Anus is another way they can get in, homosexuality. And if your third eye is open, they can get in that way. So there's actually 10 ways that these demons can enter this form. So you could go to the movies. It, it depends on what you're going to see in the movies. Uh, that, that depends on what you're allowing your eyes to see, that demons will enter. People don't understand that if they watch horror films and they watch these uh, films like The Exorcist or films about demon possession or anything like that, 
This is where the demons are going to enter from. You're opening a portal. Nobody's saying you've got to stop living. Nobody's saying you've got to stop living. But this is what this Leviathan snake man is trying to make everybody believe so that he can switch up the scripture so that whatever he does with his life is okay. Well, it's not what the scripture says. It's not what Jesus says. Okay? And it's not, it's not about being a, a religious person because uh, I have no use for religion, any religion. I have transcended religion because I see it for what it is. Um, this guy, uh, he, he's, he's all about talking about going to, going to a local church, but, um, he's supposed to be a know-it-all that knows better than, than all of these pastors that are actually pastoring churches, but yet he doesn't have a church. So that's that Leviathan snake demon there. That's what that is. That's what that is. Revelation 2, 13 to 27. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, which is in the world. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was, my faithful martyr, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you because you, you have there those who hold the doctrine of of Balaam, who, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. And to the angel of the church in Thyatra write, These things says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality and she did not. Something just popped up and it's blocking my, my view here. Give me a second. It's probably the goons doing this so I can't see it. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. And the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things says the Son of God, who has an eye like a flame and feet like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works... The last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent <coughs> of her sexual immorality and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Unless they repent of their deeds, I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he 
who searches the minds and hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say, and to the rest in Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden, but hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule with them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels, as I also have received from my father. Matthew 24, 42 to 51. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Hear that. He would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. What hour would the thief come? So, if we knew what we were doing that allowed these demons to enter our house, the demons... Satan is a thief. If we knew what hour the thief would come, we would not allow him, we would not allow our house to be broken into. This is our house. Plainly written in scripture. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? whom his master made ruler over his household. You must be delivered. You must get these demons out of you. You must turn away from the world. You must never uh, do your best to never uh, try to go back to that sinful life ever again. So the, the Christians who are lukewarm, which is what I was shown yesterday, which is why I got so emotional, and which is the majority of the Christian faith out here. Jesus will tell you he does not know you. And Christians do not understand this. Therefore you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household? To give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants. And to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth can this get any more serious for you guys you can you can plainly see i'm sure you can you can plainly see we are in the last days can this get any more serious for you the Holy Spirit is not playing out here. And these these Leviathan snake men out here want to tell you that what you're doing is okay, that the church is the bride of Christ, and you should look to the church with grace. No, the church needs to be woken up. Because everybody is lost. The church needs to be woken up. Here is what the Bible says about shepherds who don't do their job. What does the Bible say about a bad shepherd? Ezekiel 34, 1 to 31. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord God, ah, shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, who have been feeding yourselves, it's all about name and fame. It's all about getting rich out here. You've been feeding yourselves. Should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat. You clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. 
The weak you have not strengthened. The sick you have not healed. The injured you have not bound up. The strayed you have not brought back. No, 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 no. You just call them new age and you curse them. The lost you have not sought. And with force and harshness you have ruled them. Exactly, exactly. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And they became food for the wild beast. They became victims of the occult and of new age. Because you were not shepherding the sheep in the church. Okay? Uh, no Leviathan snake man is going to call me a YouTube apostle when I'm speaking the words of the Holy Spirit here. John 10, 12. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. It's exactly what's happening to every Christian out here whose pastor does not care about his own position as being a shepherd, does not care about the, the, his parishioners. And, and, and what can you say? They're not awake themselves. They're not awake themselves, so they don't know the truth. They are being run by Leviathan and Jezebel in the church. That's what's happening. Psalm 23, 1-6. The Psalm of David the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Hebrews 13, 20. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant. Ezekiel 34, 2. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, thus says the Lord God, our shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves should not shepherds feed the sheep. Jeremiah 56, chapter 50, verse 6. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray, turning them away on the mountains. From mountain to hill they have gone. They have forgotten their fold. This is what has happened to the Christian church. Revelation 7, 17. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eye. Acts 20:28. 20, Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. To care for the church of God which he obtained with his own blood. Do you understand the seriousness of what these pastors are facing because they have not done their jobs? This is not a joke, you guys. This is not a joke. And I want you to understand that, how do, why do I keep saying this is not a joke? Because what I'm reading in the Bible is actually what we're seeing out in the world. The Bible has prophesied what is going to be happening in the last days. And here it is happening. Here it is happening. Every single word in this Bible is truth. This is not a joke. The Christian church is in trouble. And Christians need to stop being lukewarm. They've got to repent and turn away from their sins. And it is the pastors out here who need to step up their game. It's not about their name and fame. It's not about outdoing the next pastor on the internet. It's about getting steady in the Lord. Getting strong in the Holy Spirit. And getting out there and getting Christians back on the narrow path. This is what it's all about now. So, I mean, the, what we're seeing is that pastors are of the world. And they're afraid to say anything because people are going to stop sending their money in or people are going to leave the church. They're leaving the church anyways. And they're being, they're being uh, drawn to the mystics community and the occult by these demons who don't care about them. Who don't, this is a chess match. 
between Satan and Jesus. This is a chess match. And uh, Satan will use every deceptive method to get especially Christians. Christians have a target on their back. And these sleepers out here who say that Christians can't be demonized, they are a massive part of the problem. And Satan has got them so demonized and so asleep, they're, they're actually spewing what Satan wants Christians to believe about him. They're actually spewing what Satan wants Christians to believe. That Christians are safe because they say Jesus is their Lord and Savior. They're safe. Demons can't hurt them anymore. So they can go out and just live their life. It's okay. They're safe. It's exactly what Satan wants Christians to believe. And these Leviathan snake men out here, it's exactly what they're helping Satan achieve out here. As they line their own pockets. Isaiah 40:11. No, John 10, 1 to 42. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by, by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Which is also what I've been saying out here. The sleepers of the world will follow sleepers of the world. Those who have transcended the world will attract others who have transcended the world. It's exactly what that verse is saying. Isaiah 40, 11, He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. You're not seeing any kind of shepherding, any guidance. You're, you're not seeing any of that in the church any longer. You're not seeing any of that in the church any longer. Nobody is, is being taught about the wages of their sin. Nobody is talking about what Jesus is saying, that he will turn away from them. He will turn them away and say he doesn't know them. This is not being taught in the church. So, so uh, the, these Leviathan snake men out here can call me a YouTube apostle. They can call me whatever they want, but they can't call me asleep. That's all they can't call me. And uh, I'm going to leave this here. Um, I'm going to put everything that I just read to you in the description so that you could read it yourself and meditate over it and understand. Try to go inside with the Holy Spirit and ask him to show you where you are on your path and what you need to do to transcend the world, to be on that narrow path. Ask him to guide you, to put you on the narrow path. Ask him to lead you to a church that, that is strong in Christ and wants to shepherd you in the proper way. You have got to take responsibility for your own path because Jesus is not going to hear your excuses that your pastor never told you this. That is the truth. You guys have a blessed day.